This is VOA News. I'm Tommy McNeil. 20 people were killed, 26 others injured when a gunman opened fire on a crowd at Walmart shopping complex in El Paso, Texas. The shooting took place when a man identified as a 21-year-old white man from Allen, Texas, near Dallas, allegedly went into the store with a rifle and started shooting. The store was packed with shoppers taking part in back-to-school sales. Governor Greg Abbott expressed his sadness. On a, on a day that would have been a, a normal day for someone to leisurely go shopping, turned into one of the most deadly days in the history of Texas. El Paso Mayor DeMarco priest first responders and sought to lay fears of the community. El Paso was too strong to be broken by a cowardly act like this one. I want to assure, that the, assure the El Paso community that we are safe. We are safe. President Trump said on Twitter that he had spoken to Governor Abbott and had pledged the total support of the federal government. El Paso, which has about 680,000 residents, is in West Texas and sits across the border from Juarez, Mexico. The United States and Taliban have officially started their eighth round of negotiations in Doha, with both sides indicating this round may result in a deal to end the longest U.S. war in history. There seem to be misunderstandings, however, about the content of the agreement by both the U.S. and Taliban. The Taliban seem to view it as an agreement to withdraw foreign troops, particularly U.S. forces, from Afghanistan. In return, they promise to ensure Afghan soil is not used for terrorism against any other country, but the chief U.S. negotiator, Zalmay Khalilzad, views a deal differently, saying U.S. presence in Afghanistan is conditions-based. This is VOA News. U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper says he wants to see American ground base intermediate range conventional missiles deployed to Asia. Speaking to reporters on his first international trip, as head of the Defense Department, Esper said the weapons were important due to the great distances covered in the Indo-Pacific region. The United States previously was unable to pursue ground-based missiles with a range of 500 to 5,500 kilometers because of the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty, a decades-old arms control pact with Russia. Washington withdrew from that pact Friday, citing years of Russian violations, which Russia denies. At least 600 people have been arrested, several beaten, at an unauthorized protest in central Moscow, calling for free elections. Reuters' David Doyle. Protesters were beaten on the streets of Moscow on Saturday as police cracked down on an unauthorized protest. More than 600 were detained, an independent monitor said, as they called for free elections. Among the arrested, prominent activist Lubov Sobol, pulled from a taxi moments before the demonstration was due to start and bundled into a van. She'd called on people to attend the protest, which authorities had warned was illegal. They say the timing and location of the demonstration had not been agreed in advance. Opposition activists say protests are repeatedly refused, leaving them no choice but to go ahead anyway. At a similar protest a week earlier, more than a thousand people were detained sometimes violently and to widespread international condemnation. That's Reuters' David Doyle reporting. <laughs> Tens of thousands of people once again filled the streets of Hong Kong to protest the government's mishandling of its ongoing political crisis that has turned much of the city against the leader, Carrie Lam. Hong Kong uh, police fired tear gas at protesters after some of them vandalized a police station Saturday. Police continuously fired several rounds of tear gas to push back a group of protesters who had thrown bricks at a police station and spray-painted inflammatory language on its outer walls. The Senate of Puerto Rico is set to hold public hearings on Monday on the nomination of veteran politician Pedro Pierluisi to replace embattled former Governor Ricardo Rosello, who resigned his promise Friday. Rosello handpicked Piri Salusi to uh, succeed him, thrusting the U.S. territory into a new period of uncertainty after weeks of protests over Rosello's mismanagement and leaked communications in which Rosello and his advisors disparaged a range of Puerto Ricans. I'm Tommy McNeil, VOA News.